Good evening, friends. How are you? Thank you very much. It's a blessing to be among young people. Um, I'm getting older. I always shave my head because my head, my hair is grey, and my beard are also grey. I have been in denial, but the more I get into denial, the more white beard come out, and uh, I have accepted that no, there is no change. I am green and uh, I'm old. You are young, you are at the prime of your life and you have the best privilege before you to explore the world and to also look for the best that the Lord can provide you. And I want to tell you, you are yet to experience great things in life. Not all of us may get married, but I want to assure you, those of us who will get married, and many of you, you will experience great things. It will be a wonderful experience that you have never had before, as long as you do the right things now. Most of the mistakes that you are trying to correct with adults, that side, are not committed in adulthood. They are committed now. Yes. So for you to prepare for a nice marriage, you don't do it when you are over there. You do it now. And uh, let me assure you, you do it right. It's within your power. You can do it right today. And uh, now, you know, when I wake up in the morning, it's uh, not part of my lesson, but it's a good introduction. I do what is called detox every morning. I drink a lot of water and uh, take some lemon and garlic in the morning. Not very good for my wife. She doesn't like it, like it but uh, I feel it's important for my health. Take some garlic and take some lemon. It is a detoxicating uh, exercise for my body and it helps me. You can try it as well. Uh, take some warm water in the morning. You flush your entire system, ensure during the day your thinking is straight and very few diseases can assail you. It prevents cancers. Not that you won't have cancer. You may have it, but it reduces those likelihoods. And also, it helps you to uh, prevent some illnesses, flus and the like. So, before having any meal, I first cleanse my system. And also, once a year, it's good to have some fasting where you cleanse your entire system, your bloodstream, cleanse your organs to ensure that your body has vitality, your body remains strong even as you age, you remain strong. I'm old, I'm turning 53 this year, I'm 52, I'm turning 53 this year, but I can still run. I can still run and outpace many people who are far younger than I am. I do it because if God wills, I want to die gently. I want to have a gentle death, but uh, you don't determine your death. Uh, you can, but if it's possible, I just want to die in my sleep. While sleeping, uh, then in the morning, they find the person has slept a longer sleep than he had envisaged, and that's how I want it. And tonight, we want to start with a detox before we can feed each other for the week. Why? Because uh, when we read about education, one of the favorite scholars in education that I love is John Dewey. And Dewey says, society needs to be disschooled. And Ellen White says, our view of education is so low. 
we have not understood what education is. And uh, uh, Jewish says society needs to be de-schooled. Most of the schooling that has been uh, happening, there has been more schooling than education. People are being schooled. You just go there, you learn skills, but without being educated, without getting the philosophy behind those skills. And uh, you have many graduates who actually are a problem, a pattern to the society. Yeah, you know, my Zimbabwe were very educated, highly, maybe less, highly schooled, very skilled. Uh, but we still struggle. Uh, let me leave that one. Let me leave that one. Uh, and, uh, but we still struggle with all these people who are very skilled, engineers, etc., etc. Uh, why? Because if you have an accountant who is dishonest, with all his accounting skills, you ask him to keep your money, he may not keep your money. He might make you to have less money than you had wanted to have. So we want to do some detox tonight on marriage. What we have been fed on marriage, what we have been told, the popular views that are trending on marriage have distorted the concept of marriage. We have it consciously and subconsciously. Our concept of marriage is influenced mainly by the media, influenced by our peers, and we are doing wrong things uh, voluntarily, involuntarily, consciously, subconsciously. There is some information which is floating, which is influencing our behavior, our views concerning marriage. And one of those views about marriage, which is floating on the market, is the playboy view of sex. There are two views. There is uh, the playboy view of sex and there is the Augustinian view. The playboy, let me, let me start with the Augustinian view. The Augustinian view was mainly prevailing around the medieval ages. The concept of marriage which was being submitted in the Augustinian view was Marriage is a necessary evil. Sex is only necessary for procreation. Otherwise, it's an evil. Actually, sex is the fruit that was eaten by Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. So that's why we talk about sex as the forbidden fruit, that they have eaten the forbidden fruit. No, friends, this is not the forbidden fruit. This is a fruit that we are given to eat. So it's not forbidden, but it's to be eaten at the right time. When you eat it, you shall not surely die. You won't die if you eat it at the right time. It's not. But the Augustinian view told us that this is the forbidden fruit. You can only do it for procreation. Actually, in Augustinian thinking, the Holy Spirit would leave the room once a couple has sex. When a husband and wife are having sex, the Holy Spirit leaves that room and he can only come back after they are done. And uh, that is why some would quote the words of Christ, two men shall be together in one bed. One shall be taken and the other shall be left. Because two people in one bed, two cannot go to heaven together. Only one can go. Because so many say, let's have separate beds. 
so that we can go to heaven. We can maximize our chances of going to heaven. Otherwise, putting up in the same bed, we are, we are endangering our chances of making it to heaven. That is where you have the concept of celibate priesthood. The priests that don't marry. The idea was to be closer to Christ, you need to be unmarried. But the problem which is here is when you go to the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it's only those who have the gift of celibacy who should not marry. If you have the gift of celibacy, you celibacy is the gift of uh, where you have no age towards the other gender. You are a female, you don't have that age towards men. And you are a man, you don't have the age towards women. But the Bible says, if you have those passions, please marry. Don't endanger yourself. Don't pain with passion. Marry. That's the solution by the Bible. So the Augustinian view was wrong. But we also have the Playboy view. The Playboy view says sex is a game that you should just play around with. Actually, there was a research by Kinsey, Alfred Kinsey. He conducted a research which was sponsored and uh, he made, Kinsey was a taxonomist and he made conclusions on sex that have influenced society for since the 1960s. The conclusions were sex does not need any inhibitions. People should be allowed to enjoy sex as they want. And there are institutions which are inhibiting sex. Those institutions are church and the family. They, people are told in church, don't commit adultery. So it makes them to have guilt as they enjoy sex. Then that creates in them some uh, distortions within them because they have been told by the pastor what you are doing is wrong. So as they try to enjoy, they remember the words of the pastor and then they stop enjoying what should be enjoyed. Uh, and they also, uh, there is the family, the marriage institution. People should enjoy sex. He says human beings and animals are the same. The animals, there are no laws on sex, they just enjoy sex and they don't have any of these malfunctions. They don't have all these problems, these mental problems, because they just enjoy sex. And actually, even earlier, Sigmund Freud had done his uh, researches on uh, psychoanalysis and uh, his conclusion was human beings what is the source of their problems? The source of the human problem is because of sex. Allow people to have sex. And that's why in the 1960s, that's where you begin to have all this uh, uh, music on sex and uh, all these ideas on sex that people should enjoy themselves. And with these diseases, Again, to mushroom and people died and also a lot of uh, challenges, mental problems because of the wrong usage of sex and this is what is permeating in our society today is the playboy view of sex and it's telling you no man, don't be told by those old people not to enjoy your life it's your time man, live your life yeah, live your life. It's your life. It's not their life. Just live your life, man. Ah. So what? It's you. And let me tell you from the Bible. The Bible is clear. You go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Plain and simple. God 
was caring about us, very, very loving. I'll tell you a few of the reasons uh, why God is so wise. He knew what we didn't know at the time, which you are only coming to know now. And let me tell you, if you have been doing it today, make a commitment to stop. We are doing a TikToks. If you have not been doing it, tell yourself, Lord, help me never to do it. But if you have done it, the Lord is forgiving and he will help you. We are doing a detox here. We are removing all the toxins in your body. And uh, what is it that happens to you? In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, Paul says, every other sin is committed outside the body. But he who commits adultery does it against his own body. You are stealing from your own body. You know, let me tell you of a story of a thief at the past terminus. You know, those, those thieves, those pickpockets at the past terminus, he wanted to, to steal. He loved stealing. So he was, you know that uh, stampede that we have? Now we no longer have it in Zimbabwe because we have so many of these on the feet. But during our days, we used to put passes and there were those long queues and other people would not queue. So we would jostle for places in the bus to get into the bus. And we called it, those days, the Koron. And let me, allow me to use that word, the Koron. Uh, I, I think they get it from the word, English word, Vika. Because you have to do Vika and on. That, that's my own uh, conclusion about it. Uh, Vika on. So Vikoron, anyway, Vikoron. <laughs> right. So as they were doing the Vikoron there, he was putting, it was on a cold day, he was putting on this uh, a jacket, you know, jazz, those long jackets. And he had put some money, five US dollars, let's say five US dollars in our day. Put five US dollars in the pocket of uh, his jacket. And as he was in the stampede, the jacket it is a way of uh, twisting and uh, doing all those things as people are getting in and pushing the jacket up. So he saw money in the jacket and he was unaware that it's his own jacket. You see it has been pushed somewhere. And he's a thief. And uh, he says, oh, there is some money. And uh, it is a uh, finger, his thrifty fingers went into that jacket, got some money, and he put it on uh, his uh, trouser pocket, put it here, and he said, ah, now I have more money. I've got $5 in my jacket, and I have another one that I have gotten. Let me go and get something to eat and uh, enjoy myself. I'll come and put the bus. This one, I wanted to use it for the bus, but I have more money. And uh, he went to enjoy himself. When he came back, he checked in uh, his jacket, no money. People are thieves. Ah, people steal money. People are... That's precisely what you are doing when you are committing adultery. You are stealing from yourself. And uh, you go there, you say, I have stolen, nobody saw me. Ah, no one saw me. Yeah, ah, me, I'm clever. You are stealing from yourself. Your own body, stealing from your own future. You get into your pocket uh, and take what is yours. What should help you in your journey? You are taking it yourself. Still. And you say, I'm clever. I have not been seen. I love stories. You know, the other time, this one didn't really happen, but uh, it's a common story in our days. A person was chased by a lion, climbed a tree, and went up the tree, spent some time, weather days, up the tree. Uh, and don't 
check on the veracity of the story, but get to the moral of the story. As he was up the tree, he was hungry, checked on the lion, the lion was sleeping. He said, yeah. He plucked a twig from the tree, threw it on the ground. The lion did not respond. He said, yeah, I think the lion is asleep. And uh, carefully, he went down the tree, carefully tiptoed, very, very carefully, and uh, went to the store to get something to eat. Then came back carefully, tiptoed again, went up the tree and laughed at the lion. Said the lion thinks I have not eaten. Me, I have eaten my meal. I am clever. That's exactly what you are doing with adultery. You are tiptoeing carefully. Carefully. No one is seeing. Then you laugh, you laugh at the adults. They never saw uh, those. They never saw. Hey, hey, hey. You are yourself, you are putting yourself in your own prison, finishing your own life, and uh, you think us, we are not clever. Yes, we are not clever, we are sleeping. You are still sleeping, yes. We don't know. We are sleeping. But there is somebody who is stealing from himself while you, while you are sleeping. Finish your own body. Take it and slaughter it yourself. You take yourself for slaughter. Yourself with the knife yourself. Say, I'm taking myself. And uh, like Abraham and Isaac, where is the lamb for the slaughter? I am the lamb for the slaughter. But I won't be slaughtered by Abraham. I will slaughter myself. That's what you're doing. And what does God tell us on these issues? And what have we known uh, from psychology? What happens to you? Several things happen to you. There is in neuroscience what are known as neural pathways. When you do something again and again, the, your nervous system, your, neuro, your neural system has a way, just like what you do with computers, you are much more computer literate than I am. I realize when I get to Facebook, open my, I find a friend suggestion, so and so, and I wonder, why has it suggested so and so? I used to wonder those days, the guy I know, why has it told me that I should also add so and so? I say, ah, it has seen the people that I am picking and it knows that, oh, okay, this person is in this circle. Let me, let's choose friends for him, either from Solusi or from the Adventist church or from a place where he has been. That's how your neural system also works. It creates some neural pathways. I'm happy. There is a book that I would ask you to buy. It should be there on a, by our former vice chancellor on neural pathways by Professor Iti Kwebu. A uh, very, very good book. I've read it. Very, very good book. Yeah, you just look for the book and uh, get it online, read it. What happens is, as you do these things, you say when you commit adultery, you don't uh, do it while you are relaxed. No, it has to be done quickly because you will get caught. So quickly, if it's under a tree, the guy, he has to do it quickly. Quickly. Why? Because you will get caught. So the whole thing 
has to be. Otherwise, uh, the security, if it's a solution, they might step you uh, before you get to the end of the journey. Uh, it's, if it's somewhere else, the whole thing has to be done in a hurry. And that affects your neural system. Because you now get used that this thing has to be done. The port itself tells you that here we are doing something that has to be done quickly. The, to the guy, it just orders you. Everything has to be in order quickly. Now you are married, but you are used to doing it very quickly. Now there is nobody to disturb you. You have been declared the husband and wife. You can have these things whether in the afternoon or whatever time, but the pot is used quickly, quickly. And you start on a journey. You are married now. You start on a journey. Married to a wife, nice, nice wife, beautiful wife. And you say, let's go on this journey. You get on the journey. But quickly the system finish. <laughs> Me, I have arrived. How did you arrive before we leave, before we could depart? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm already from Marari. No, we, have, we haven't left the solution. I'm from Marari already. Uh, the wife says, let's, let's try and see, let's wait. Every day when you try, the gentleman is already in Harare. Let's go. Uh, the lady is trying to get on the way, the gentleman from Harare. <laughs> Finally, what happens to the lady? She gets frustrated with the entire experience and she has some problems, either frigidity, that, ah, this thing, I am now, this guy just wants to get this thing quickly and go, I am being used here. Or she quickly goes to tell other people that I have a problem, you know. And at times, she might end up telling some colleagues at work that I have a problem. Hey, me, this, 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 this. And there are some mischievous people there at work, who can help you, who can help her to have the experience she is longing for. And there is nothing threatening to a man than to have somebody assisting you because you don't know how to do the thing well. And the mistake is not committed there by the adults there. It's committed now. You make that mistake now. So when you think you are clever, as a man, you think you, you are whatever, you know how to do these things, you are endangering yourself, the neural pathways. And also the guilt, the, the guilt and shame. You are a lady, you are now married, you are used to doing it, to stealing. And every time you do it, the body just freezes that year. We are now stealing. What if mommy comes in? What if somebody knows me? You first search around. Is there anybody who knows me here? The body itself, it just freezes because you are afraid of being caught. But now you are married. You are licensed to do these things, whether in the kitchen or in the bathroom. The pastor has declared you husband and wife. And the husband says, let's have a nice time together. But the body just freezes, afraid of being caught. No one will catch us, man. Even if they catch us, it's their own baby. They know we're doing it. <sighs> Me. <sighs> Dochka, Dochka, Dochka. <laughs> what? The body, neural pathways. And finally, uh, what happens is the system has to get ready for the experience to be enjoyable. The whole system has to get ready. You can suffer from what is known as frigidity, 
where there is no response and the male wants to have the, some time with you, nothing is happening. And most of the problems that happen with couples, the origin is sexual. There is no sexual harmony at home. But it will manifest itself in different ways. Ah, no, he finishes money. Hey, he, what, 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 what? No, the problem actually is here in the bedroom. And when was the mistake done? Here. As you were busy trying to steal what is yours. It's not the forbidden fruit, it's your fruit that you will have and enjoy to have and to hold yours and enjoy it. So have your time, wait. And uh, I've taken too much time the night and visit. But uh, say to yourself, what if you've done it? The Lord gives you another chance. And you need the power from God. You don't need to go around telling everybody, getting up to church. Me, I'm, uh, 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 it's between you and God. Uh, I, I did this, this, uh, 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 it's between you and God. And me, I don't even want, you know, when ladies come to me for counseling, Pastor, I have done the, uh, 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 mirror, mirror, mirror. That is yours, yours and God. You want to tell me so what I do with it? What will I do with it? It's yours and God. And God has forgiven you. You don't need another assurance that you are forgiven. Yeah, it's yours and God. And uh, the Lord gives you the power. And you, as I close, uh, Nancy Van Pelt has uh, an acronym for safe sex. Uh, S, set your standard. Tell yourself, uh, Psalm 139, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Look at yourself uh, and say, a beautiful young lady like myself. Such a beautiful young lady. Tell yourself, such a beautiful young lady like myself cannot just have everybody just kissing from every corner. Uh, uh, uh every just undressing every corner it has to be done in church everybody has to see such beauty such a handsome young man Luna. he has to be seen by everybody putting on a nice suit marrying while people are watching I am fearfully and wonderful take pride in yourself have confidence in yourself whatever has happened in your life that is you and God have confidence in yourself. Walk with pride. Don't be apologetic. Ah, me, I ah, me, I'm finished. Ah, 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 you're not finished. <laughs> you are God's property. Walk with confidence and uh, have that pride. Me, I believe in myself. Whatever people would say, yeah, you stammer, your teeth are misaligned. Is there eyes which are misaligned, which are not seeing properly? <laughs> Me, mine are okay, I'm okay. Tall, strong, happy. It's me. Whatever you say about me, it's your own business. Me, I believe in myself. I see, look at myself in the mirror and say, Ah, Lord, hey, you took your time. Such a gentleman to create. It's me, I believe in myself. Yes, believe in yourself. Don't ask other people to affirm you. It's those people whom you are inviting to affirm you who abuse you. Affirm yourself. Believe in yourself. You are beautiful. You don't need somebody else to tell you that you are beautiful. No, I mean, I don't need your, your affirmation. It's good if you have me, but if you don't, I am still Sivanda. I am still handsome. I am still Pastor Spanda. I believe in myself. Stay set your standard. Tell yourself such a gentleman 
like me should not be caught in a corner with a girl. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. This is, uh, we used to have a teacher here at Solus years ago. Uh, he was called, um, he was from Zambia, I forget his, his surname. But he had just done computer science from the University of London. Those days, in the 1990s, computer science was something uh, to marvel. Even now, it's still something to marvel at. And uh, there were new computers. Actually, Solusi were the leader in computers here in Zimbabwe. The all of Zimbabwe were the leader in computers. And he had done his master's, MSc, from the University of London. And people would go to him and say, say, ah, I'm struggling with computers. Please, can I withdraw? And other lecturers would say, no, 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 just try again. Just be patient. You will catch up. Him, you would quickly sign your withdrawal. Yeah, no, it's okay, my son. Computers were not meant for everybody. Uh, yeah. So when you see others misbehaving, doing those things, Tell yourself, this classy behavior was not meant for everybody. Yeah, we are few. It's for, it's for the few. And be part of those few. Yeah. I mean, uh, there are some things which are easy to do, which, which are doable. You don't need a degree to kiss a girl outside marriage. Do you need some intelligence to do that? I mean, do you need a degree? To, to do that, is there a course called uh, pre, uh, Premarital Sex 101? <laughs> Zero. Nothing of that sort. Uh, it's done instinctively. Even donkeys can do it. Uh, it, it can be done by anything. Even, even roosters can do it. Cocks can do that. You, you don't need some supernatural intelligence to do that. No. It just needs amount, enough, um, enough dosage of folly to do, and you do it. Set your standards. Number two, avoid. When you want to fast, don't linger around the bakery. I mean, I want to fast, but I'll be doing it in a bakery. I'll be just be seated here. I am not eating, but I, 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 I am fasting, but I'll just be seated here inside the bakery. Uh -uh. Avoid. I have my philosophy. Me, I usually tell people that I, I hug my wife, I hug my daughter, I hug my mother, I hug my sisters. Anybody who is not a close relative who is of the other gender, I don't hug. I don't. Old as I am 53, I don't hug. Why? I don't have the gift of celibacy. Me, I don't. I don't. My body is proper and I don't. Uh, there is, when I hug, there is something I feel as I hug my wife, there's something I feel and I am okay doing it on my wife. With my daughter, nothing I feel because I have seen her as she has been growing and there is nothing that I feel. So I don't want to feel it in another person. I, I, I greet, hello my sister, God bless you. May wonderful things happen in your life from there. Mm. If pastors are so afraid, you, you are not a deacon, and uh, you are, how can you have such strength? <laughs> right. Then, AF, flee. Uh, when these things, let me tell you a story. When I was dating my girlfriend, who is my wife, I was a pastor in Cholocho, she was teaching in a school uh, some 23 kilometers away from my, where I was. I didn't have a car at the time, and I would board a bus during the day, go and uh, visit her, we talk, 
and after we've chatted, we have a prayer. Bye-bye, see you. And the bus, the evening bus would come around 7 in the evening, and uh, I go back to my station. The other day, the bus didn't come. <laughs> 7 o'clock, no bus. 8 o'clock, no bus. 9 o'clock, by the bus station. 9, no bus. Then I said, no, I think I need to be on my way. She was with a friend, another girl who was very close to us. Then I said, no, I have to get going. The friend said, no, what you can do, Pastor? You can, I can go and sleep with your girlfriend. And you can put up in my room. Who in his right mind would think that you slept with me when your girlfriend is here? It, it, it will clear all the misconceptions. No, me here, there is right food here. And uh, there is also people who are watching me. Over 3,000 church members who are watching me. I have to get going. And I don't want any demon to attack me at night when somebody is close by who can solve my dilemma. Uh, <laughs> let me get going. I began to walk. One, two, one, two. 23 kilometers at night, I arrived at half past one in the morning when I was going to Cholocho Center. As I arrived, the bus also arrived <laughs> at the same time. And I was fulfilled that I have. And uh, I've always told my wife, you can ask her, I have always told her that I never abused you. And I have always told you that, you know, what I wanted is, I wanted every girl who would date me. After things fail, she must be, talk about everything else and say, ah, no, the pastor was this, he was short-tempered, he was sending me books on Ellen White, but no story that this child might be the child of the pastor. The pastor did this to me. I said, I don't want that. I want that lady to be taken by another man without a dent from me. And uh, make that covenant with yourself. That I want this guy, I want to, if he won't marry me, I want to hand him over to another lady without any scar from me. And make that commitment with yourself, then E, expect punishment. When you do these right things, people will think you are backward. People will think, ah, no, man, this, this lady, she is an Ellen White. Ah, this guy, he thinks like a pastor. He is what, what, they laugh at you. Let me tell you, you will lose girlfriends. Yeah, you will lose boyfriends. They will laugh at you, but it's okay. Let them go. Yeah, allow them, free them, free them. Right. I will open up for discussions tomorrow. Tomorrow, come for question and answer. Uh, for tonight, uh, let's make a covenant. Those who say, Lord, I make a covenant with you tonight. I shall keep my body pure. Whatever is in the past, that one is not here for what I make a comment is from today, I want to live an upright life. I want to be safe. Let's stand and have a prayer. We have our leader, Mrs. Malufu. She will pray for us. As we pray, as God to love you. Father God in heaven, we want to thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you once again for speaking to us and for the living lesson for such a time as this. We ask that, dear Father, you may search our hearts for those of us that are not convicted of the sins that shall have been laid to us. God, we ask that you may search our hearts. That is where we are going to help us, Lord, and transform our lives. We ask for forgiveness for those of us that have done the things that have been said. We ask, dear Father, that you may renew our minds. Uh, given the temper and all that's going on in the mind that may affect our way forward. You have promised that you will the minds of the world. May you do this for young people whose minds are tainted by these kinds of sins. We ask that you may help them to live a pure life for 